Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. My name is Josh Davis. Uh, I'm Michael Freeman. And uh, if you'd like to uh, find us during the live tapings on Monday nights at 9, you can find us at youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy. And uh, then we take that video, edit it down, add some graphics, and that's posted to voluntaryvirtues at youtube.com slash user slash voluntaryvirtues at 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. And uh, that's about it. Uh, Michael, you have a guest. Uh, by the way, congratulations for coming to the show and being my new co-host. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Our congratulations in order, Captain Modest. Yeah. Yeah, I should think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks for having me aboard, Josh. Uh, I pre or JB, right? I, uh, I appreciate it. I've been looking into getting on a show or starting my own for a while and like I said I don't even know how to use YouTube so this works great for me. Um, all right, we have we have Derek Rose with us here tonight. Um, he's of the Conscious Resistance Network, the Houston Free Thinkers. You might know him from Adam versus the Man. He writes for Ben Swan and the Anti Media. He's a uh, pretty well known in the in the liberty movement even though he doesn't like celebritarians. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Derek, what's up? How are you doing tonight, man? Hey, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to come talk with you guys. Sure, we appreciate you doing it. So, yeah, we just wanted to... Uh, I know you've been a busy guy. Um, Jesse Ventura. I, I don't, I'm not sure the video really came out yet, but you, you, I think you put out the teaser. Yeah, no, it hasn't come out yet. I think they're going to put it out through his... Uh, his podcast this Thursday afternoon is usually when they come out, so it should be out this week. But I put a short, short teaser. We talked for about an hour, and it was, uh, it was an interesting conversation. I mean, I was thankful just to be invited to his, uh, his show to have a new platform, you know, to talk about my work and stuff like that. I definitely don't agree with him on a lot of different things, but I do appreciate some of the work that he has done and uh, the ways that he's been willing to stick his neck out in some areas that most people in his positions haven't taken the opportunity to do so, so it was cool to talk to him on that and also to kind of go back and forth on some philosophical ideas with him. Great, um, and he's at uh, Jesse Ventura Off the Grid? Yeah, yeah, he does the Off the Grid like live pod, live like video cast on or TV and in the We the People podcast, which is audio only, also on and there. Again, I live in the real world, but in a civilized, organized society, though, Derek, don't you feel that there has to be a form of government? Otherwise, we'd have strictly chaos to be every man or woman for themselves. Well... Two things on that. I think that that is a, uh, a false premise that we've been sold and maybe some of us have bought into that without, in the absence of government or the police, that there would be chaos. Because for one, I believe, um, and I've seen that people will still organize. There will be still be some, some semblance of uh, cooperation and organizations that we could go ahead and call government if we wanted to. I think most of us, though, are just about, uh, most of those who share the ideas and, and this opting out idea are really just trying to remove uh, as much influence of government as possible. So, you know, when you when you start to do that, I think that the logical position, um, eventually you conclude that, you know, we don't need any government ruling over over us. And I've heard you uh, speak on this before and, and give give your opinion. I really do respect it because, I, honestly, I, I believe that there are some people who would consider themselves to be anarchist-minded who... Um, are not as compassionate as maybe they could be when taking this position and just believe that tomorrow we could remove the government and everything would work out fine. I personally don't believe that. I think that in the position we are now, it's going to take a lot of work and effort to um, have a philosophical revolution, evolution of the hearts and minds in, in order for people to realize that we don't need this nanny state. We don't need somebody to take care of us. I really look at it as people just having a bunch of mommy and daddy issues where they feel like they need somebody to take care of their life instead of being um, you know this leader of their own their own journey and now he uh, he saw you out mm -hmm. wow. wow yeah his, his uh, scheduler got in touch with me I think it's a lot of this stuff seems to have come from the vice article that came out after Liberty Fest in New York City uh, there was an article about like, I think it was titled libertarians are bored with politics or done with politics or something like that and the first part of it was a quote from the speech that I gave there and just uh, 
I was surprised that I was even <laughs> mentioned in it because there was a lot of good speakers and a lot of people talking there who are more well known than I am. But the uh, lady who wrote it ended up taking some of the information that we talked about and used it for a story. So that le that's led to a few different people seeking uh, me out and looking at my work now. And uh, that's you know it's always interesting. I always appreciate that and try to use that to network and help spread the ideas that I believe in. Yeah, I know you're. Um... You know, you're no stranger to getting on a stage. I think you just did Jack Fest this year too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that was really cool, man. I was. I, I don't know if you've got a chance to go out there yet, or no, not yet, not yet. Well, I, I, I definitely think that it's going to continue to grow. I mean, it's in its third year now, and Jackalope Freedom Festival. It's in Arizona, up in the mountains, and it was really awesome. I mean, I, I, I never got to go to that part of Arizona before. I've just seen the like, desert. But this is like up in the forest and really, really great place and lots of good people just selling their crafts and food and different things. They were out there like with uh, quail. They had quail tacos that they raised the quail themselves, and then they uh, they actually like shot a pig out there and roasted it. Did, you know, just doing sustainable, like taking care of your own shit type stuff. And um, you know, talking with other people, I got to talk a little bit there. And Larkin Rose came out there. Uh, some other people, so I see that and other things like Pork Fest, since Pork Fest has continued to get big, you know, I imagine that it's gonna, there you go, it's gonna spark other, um, you know, other other events similar to that, you know, are just gonna spring up in other places like they have in, over there in Arizona and other cities around the country are trying to do this as well, so I think that it's just gonna be a trend where more people are like, you know what, let's do this, let's have some kind of camp out festival that's based around these ideas of freedom and you know, self-expression. Yeah, um, you know, Pork Fest is a great is a great beginning to uh, the the expanding idea of, of freedom events and you know free trade and ag and agorism in general. And uh, as an agorist, as a free market um, entrepreneur, I suppose I. I want to see the competition there. I want to see Jack Fest and Port Fest start to compete, and you know Liberty Fest too. And speaking of <laughs> celebritarian freedom events, let's let's touch on on Liberty Fest. Yeah, Liberty Fest was interesting. Um, I, that was the first time I spoke at Liberty Fest. I've never been invited. I spoke at the Anarchy in NYC last year, and that was. That was also interesting. Uh, I felt like that was probably more. Uh, I probably had more like-minded individuals who were at that one than at, particularly at Liberty Fest. Although there was definitely a strong anarchist strain at uh, Liberty Fest this year, but at Anarchy NYC, it was really just kind of solidifying my beliefs on the whole celebritarian culture. And when I say that, I mean people who seem to just kind of buy into this idea of you know, you made some YouTube videos or you post on Facebook or you have a Twitter account with so many followers or whatever that you're, you know, an internet celebrity that's promoting ideas that we all believe in and so kind of buy into that ego at all and really play up that and, and seems to start buying into a separation of like, oh, this is this great activist person who does all this work, like I need to worship them and kiss their ass and do all this type of stuff instead of... Yep. Trying to promote that we're all able to do these things, you know, that we need to work together, and that's really what I try to promote as well. Is like, hey, like I get invited to speak at some events, and that's cool, and I appreciate that if people, you know, care about what, the things that I think and, and want to say. But I really, my, the main message is that, hey, we need to work together to make these things happen. You know, I don't have any um, false belief that I'm going to do this all by myself or one group of people or anything like that. Great, yeah, um, you know. And I think it's funny because as modest and humble as you might be about it, you are kind of a celebritarian. Um, and, and I appreciate your work. I, I, I like some of you guys a lot, you and, and Larkin Rose in particular. Um, but I'm not going to follow you guys into Mount Doom. I'm not going to you know, pick up swords and, and, and storm the gates of the White House or with behind you guys anything or anything. I don't, I don't believe that I have... Uh, authority figures in any way, shape, or form, and that's how a lot of people put Adam Kokesh or Josie the Outlaw or whoever it is, and, and, and you're right, I think it's a problem, and I think people are focusing more on inter-movement gossip and, 
and entertainment than promoting the message of freedom, and it's kind of becoming a problem. I yeah, absolutely. I mean, I touched on that um, on my at my on my speech uh, in Liberty Fest, basically just saying that for some people, like you said, it's it's an entertaining thing where you can sort of live vicariously through other people or through movements or whatever on Facebook and on social media and whether you ever leave your house or go to a protest or participate in anything out in the physical world you can sit there and watch and participate if you want to or just lurk in the shadows and, and debates and sort of keep up with other people's affairs and really follow people but never take action in the real world and I was really trying to encourage people like hey look, this is not just some Inter, you know, new subculture for us to buy into and get all the liberty apparel and you know just you know create this niche of another subculture. Like we need this these ideas to go mainstream, and in order for that to happen, we have to change the the steps that we're taking. And and one of those is not buying into just um, idolizing other people and just doing these things that are going to um, commodify the liberty movement and make it just another consumerist you know, bullshit movement that will last for a couple of years and then fade out into whatever's next, you know. It's got to be bigger than that. Call, calling people status and saying neener neener and stroking each other's egos is not going to help help free society. Um, and I really liked in your speech how I really wish I could have made it. I had, I had prior obligations that weekend and it's really only four hours away so I shouldn't have gone. But anyways... Um, Michael, do you mind if I do... Uh, yeah, I, I just want to ask a question. Do, um, do you think that this um, uh, stroking one's eagle, uh, that kind of thing, do you think that um, people are just buying into emotion? It's more, instead of fear, it's more like, how can we get back and, you know, strike, uh, strike at, you know, the government, that kind of thing? Do you think that's emotion, or do you think that's based on logic, or do you think that I'm just... You know, smoke right now, blowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so rephrase the question just a little bit. I think I got what you're going with, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. Um, so my my thing is, I I always notice like there's this uh, dynamic between logic and emotion, mm -hmm. um, and I believe that uh, the as you really understand anarchism, I think that more people. Uh, start thinking more and um, but I think that like what you guys were saying a lot of this uh, celebritarian stuff is just based on emotion as opposed to more logic and I think people buy into anarchism just based on emotion like they hate the state for what reason they can't really uh, you know ground it you know what I'm saying they uh, hate the, they hate the state because Stefan Molyneux told them to yeah, you know, right. and I've, I've talked about this before in a, in a video I put out a while back called Who's Leading This Revolution Anyway? And just the idea that, and I saw this firsthand in Ferguson going out there, but basically the idea that, as you're saying uh, there, man, that we need, we need more people thinking about these ideas, and generally people just, they get upset, they react from that emotional stance, they feel like they're being attacked, and they, they see a bunch of people doing things, following Ron Paul or doing whatever, and it's something they feel like they can be a part of. And some people still, within the bigger movement of people who care about issues, I don't want to just define it as libertarians, but just generally people who care about issues, you know, and who are awake more than the average, you know, sheeple, status, whatever. They, you know, they they take steps to to push these ideas out there and, and really trying to get uh, the masses to see these ideas, but we're also dealing with the fact that a lot of people just want to belong and just want to to feel like they're a part of something. And those same people might slightly awaken, they join the liberty movement, but they don't take on the role of, of still employing those deeper critical thinking skills and, and looking at society that way. And that's really what we need. You know, I feel like when I see somebody like that in the, in the sort of interim, I'm like, okay, well, at least they're, they're sort of following people who have their, you know, their, um, the best intentions for them. And along the way, we, we have to teach them and help them, encourage them to be their own leader and to stop just kind of blindly following us. You know, it's not just like, we want, okay, now we have them all following us, so that's a better thing. No, we want to lead people to leading themselves, and a lot of us have forgotten that and have given away our power, um, our own innate power to, to rule ourselves and to own ourselves, and that's really what this has to be about, is showing people that so that they can get past this. And I do think it is, that's where the, the whole ego thing comes in, where it's, it's both sides, where 
us as individuals feel good getting this attention because it does it's nice to know if somebody says like a video you did an article or whatever something you wrote inspire them did this or that you're like wow that's encouragement and motivates you to keep going but some people take it further than that and really buy into that and let it separate them from the people that we're working with and, and creating this you know you're better than me type thing and uh, we need to get past those those really low level base emotional states of thinking and and get to higher level levels of thinking which is what I I think we're all after here this this movement is supposed to be about Obtaining peace, prosperity, and freedom, not popularity, not being cool. You know, spreading this idea of you should really follow this guy is counterproductive in my opinion. You should follow yourself. You should follow your own desires as long as you're not, you know, inflicting harm upon other people. You should do what you think is right, not what some talking head on YouTube says. Even even though some some of you talking heads on YouTube have, in, have introduced me to these ideas and and helped me understand that anarchy is just not about punk rock. It's about it's about love and about peaceful association and voluntary interactions. It's not about throwing bottles and, and, and leather jackets. And there's merit there. You alone, you have inspired me in numerous ways. You're uh, <laughs> you're fucking sorry, sorry. Your your videos with the upside down flags are are hilarious, and the one you did with Kokesh, where I really discovered you, was in uh, I think it was Texas. You you guys were in the airport. The Reagan Airport, as in DC. yeah, yeah. And you're trying to hand out flyers, and this other dude is just just taking them out of your hand. You're not handing them to him, <laughs> and you guys pulled off like seven to ten state employees, and it was. Brilliant, I thought. Um, that was a fun time. <laughs> yeah, and I can tell you were a little nervous at points too, and I like that. If it, if you're not nervous, it's not courage, right? Yeah. Um, anyways, yeah, I wanted you. To, I wanted to get a chance to talk about your book a little bit before you go. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to yeah. to do that. Um, and again, thanks for having. Me. Too. Let's not leave your friend out. I don't. I don't really know who he is, to be honest. Um, that I'm writing the book with. Yeah. Yeah, John Vibes. I'll tell you guys all about it because it's actually this is a good time to talk about it because he is. Um, John lives in Maryland and I'm down here in Houston, Texas. But um, he's a writer as well. He actually got me into getting these writing gigs and uh, get started to get paid for doing the activist writing journalism. Can I, can I ask you a personal question? Sure. Do, does like Ben Swan or the Anti Media pay you? Yeah, I get paid from Ben Swan, Anti Media, The Liberty Beat, and Tony Styles. Those are the yeah, the Tony Styles too. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, those are the paid uh, writing gigs that I have. But John helped me get the first one I had a couple years ago. Um, and before I even came across him, actually, I was reading his articles for a while online because um, he writes a lot about solutions and agorism and and you know some of his his stuff is really like four strategies for under peacefully underthrowing the status quo like and just sure. totally about like building alternative institutions and so obviously I jived with that really well um, and then when I went to go intern with Adam which is when we shot the airport video that was in 2012 the year before I hosted the show um, I actually just happened to run into John Vibes who is the guy that I'm talking about who was at Adam's house randomly one night and realized that hey dude I think I read your stories your articles a lot like we should you know we should work together and we realized that we had a lot of similar ideas as far as our interest in spirituality meditation psychedelics uh, shamanism and Buddhism those type of ideas and voluntarism agorism anarchy and so we started fleshing out these ideas um, and we worked together for a couple of days in person then and most of our work has been online but he's actually flying out for about a week this Wednesday so we can sit down and hammer this book out we're gonna see if we can actually finish it this next week and get it out by 2015 but the book is called the conscious resistance reflections on anarchy and spirituality and it's basically going to be our our manifesto for the synthesis of spiritual belief and also a belief in self-governance you know and uh, self-ownership which to me goes hand in hand with Basically, the, the whole thesis of it could be that at, as we recognize that the state has come along and taken away our ability to self-govern and that there has been 
historically different different uh, societies have existed without a state in different areas around the world and it is possible we can we can do this we have done this but as the state came in they encroached upon our freedom we all know how that works but in the same way the state encroached and the state through uh, religious institutions the church the church and the state together the church claimed a monopoly on God and on the spirit on connection on what it means to be connected to this planet and you know anything of that sort of metaphysical or what we would deem spiritual um, connection to you know things beyond the five senses that you can experience through deep states of drumming or meditation or psychedelics other things like that so I, I just see parallels there where the state and the church have come together historically and employed monopolies over our you know very existence over our connection to the planet our possible connection or lack of connection to what God means, what that word even, you know, how, how we... To relate this word to democide, which I think Alex Jones coined that term, and I don't really like to quote him, to be honest, but that's okay. <laughs> I think the church has committed theocide on, on, on very large scales over, you know, numerous times, and and I think that's a problem. Spirituality, I, I'm actually an anti-theist, and I don't, I don't have beliefs myself, but I'm okay if other people do, as long as they don't want to point guns at me to make me read their books or something. Um, you know, the way that you explain it is based in peace rather than based in um, rules or, or certain structure and certain things that I must do. And I'm really interested to see this book come out. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, the way that I like you do your um, your daily affirmations, and that's really cool. It's 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 really. See, awesome. I'm trying to bring in a certain element into, I guess, this larger liberty anarchist, and then more specifically, like a gorist movement, um, market anarchist movement. Just an understanding of the ways that like a holistic approach to to liberty can help you know what I mean by holistic is um, not just worrying about liberty and freedom in the sense of the physical world and how we understand economics and philosophy and the state of government and things like that but also knowing that ultimately we're facing external tyrants as much as we are facing an internal tyrant and yeah. if we are constantly battling this internal tyrant which is you know a piece of us and our, all of our individual doubts, fears, and insecurities that we experience in our own unique ways, if we allow those things to control us, then ultimately we will find out that we're not happy and that we're not, if we're not happy, we're not free, regardless of how small we've shrunk the state or, you know, what circumstances we've changed about the world. If Ultimately, if we are still as individuals are still experiencing these various traumas and are not healing from them, then I believe that it's going to be a lot longer until we do escape statism and may even get rid of the government and, and get to some new point that we think could be um, could be paradise of some sorts but if we don't get into those deeper roots and really strike the root of these causes that statism, statism exists and the root causes of why people want to control other people then I think that we're going to evolve into some new form of statism that will be a lot more fucked up because people will have lost touch with not only like the nature and the planet but also our own emotions and our own rational thinking you know and that's what I think this really is on. It's a, it's a it's a war on our consciousness, our mind, our ability to critically think and to uh, establish these deeper connections to our own existence. Um, I, I, I know you really. No, go ahead, Josh. Oh, I think they want to just keep most of our um, <clears throat> most of the population at a lower IQ so that they can, uh, you know, control and manipulate slaves. Um, you know, they want it just at a, you know, precise point, like around 60 or something. You know, just enough smarts to get by, but not enough to really think about who they are, maybe. Absolutely. If these, if these people are any good at government, then they want to keep their, their population dumb, definitely. Yeah. Um, but Derek, right. you know, what you say there, I, there's actually something we, I know you got to go, though. Yeah. Yeah, I got a couple more minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to touch on because you mention, um, you know, you make a video. I don't remember what it's called, but it's about internal control, internal rulers, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that's something I struggle with a little bit. No, I struggle with plenty of things, but <laughs> you know, that's one of the things. Like, uh, 
I'm not going to call myself an addict exactly. I'm not going to call myself a drunk or a, a drug addict or anything. I probably am a little bit in some ways. I don't know if you guys have been, been watching me all night. Um, but yeah, I use beer a lot. and it, it's, it's got a hold on me, right? And I know that. I know I'm a drunk, and it's okay. It's, it, it is what it is. I'm not hurting anybody by doing it except myself. I own my own body, so I can do that, right? But uh, yeah, what do you feel about that that hypocrisy there? Like, well, I, I, I claim no gods, no masters, yet. No gods, no masters, but you, ultimately you are your own god and you are on your own master. So that just a couple of things there. Like one of the real one of the if if I can get interject anything else into the libertarian anarchist movement, it would be. Um, conscious language and us just learning to empower ourselves through the language that we use and I know to some people it seems silly but really words are symbols and the symbols and the words that we express that start with our thoughts our words and our actions I mean this becomes your habits your behaviors um, and it's important for us to know the words that we're using by for example by even calling people leaders you are sort of empowering them in that way and you're making that a part of your conscious language that these people are leading you but these people are not leading you and when you say things like for example I struggle and still do from time to time but I struggled a lot in the past with uh, just really self self hatred and, and really negative self talk and just constantly judging myself and saying all this ridiculous stuff to myself and it took for me to uh, have a conversation and to to just catch myself in that and be like no I'm not stupid for X, Y, and Z. It's okay for me to have these thoughts. It's okay for me to feel like this. Like, and you know, just doing that and really communicating with yourself. Because I would say, for one, whether or not there's you know a god or a master, or anybody else telling you that it's wrong or illegal or whatever else, the fact that you are thinking these thoughts and feel felt the need to ask me the question to me would say that you obviously gave, have given it some thought and think that there might be something there worth considering. Sure. Oh, oh. I'm not sure that I'm ready to yet, but. You know, I like my liver. I like. Well, you will when you're ready, man. As long as you're in that much of a control, uh, controlled state of mind, where you're at least, you know, you're, like you said, you're conscious of your decisions, of what your actions and everything. So, when you feel like, okay, you know what, I'm ready to go to this next place. You know, it's not about being wrong or right or anything. It's like it's just we all make decisions. Sometimes it takes for, and like in my case, years ago, I mean, it takes to get like kicked in the chest, you know, and get messed up in a legal system or you know, to see people you care about die or just, you know, crazy things happen and sometimes those are your, uh, you know, your, your life-changing event but other times it's just, it's, it's just a decision you make one day. You decide, you know what, I want to live this way now and see what that's like. I, I think it's a light bulb that goes off, Michael. Like, it, I think it's a light bulb, like something you just realize, hey, like you said, the words that you say, you mean what, or you say what you mean, mean what you say. You know, and the def definitions mean everything. And it's like when you actually put two and two together and realize that you are hurting yourself and you have a body, just one body, you know, like you just, you, you got to live with it. You got to, you know, help yourself, you know, just don't hurt yourself. I mean, everything, like alcohol can be used as a tool, like to, to you know, relax. And, you know, shrooms or anything, you know, just relax, but don't, like, anything in moderation, you know, gluttony is a sin for a reason, you know, or um, uh, vanity is a sin, quote-unquote, you know, I don't totally 100% agree with that, but I think there's some historical knowledge and some truth to that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, it's not a moral, but it's, it's a problem. I, you know, I also I want to say one more thing, and then I got to get out of here, guys. I think it's also important to uh, to recognize the the power and the importance of self love. And I, I, like you said, we only have this one body. And man, I think back at like, and it sounds cheesy or corny because we you know we all I guess get these uh, stories whenever we're like in our prime and we're partying and just being going through our crazy phase. And sometimes those crazier phases are crazier for some of us. And um, I just feel like. When I look back, I'm like, damn, how did I survive that night or, like, putting that much drugs in my system or doing this or that? And I'm like, wow, but I also have always had a love for really, like, pushing the limits and pushing the edge. And, you know, sometimes you don't come back from those edges, but you live and you have these experiences. And ultimately, it's up to you, for you to decide. Like I said, I've lost some really close friends to me who 
you know, rode that as long as I could, and they were never able to really recover from it, and ended up, you know, pushing the boundaries and onto the next life, and that's that's a difficult thing to experience. And I felt like I got to go pretty far and then test those waters, and you know, get it all banged up, and then survived it. And, okay, wow, like okay, let's see what this life can be like now, you know, and then just try to go down a different path, you know. And the way I f figure, it's it's all just different experiences, you know what I mean? Like, if you're in control, then you're in control. And you know, if you if you care about yourself and you know that you're taking actions that come from a place of self love and you know compassion for others, then you're going to move towards a place that's about freedom, that's about you know these these ideals because they just go hand in hand. Right, right. Yeah, that's 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 beautiful, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, Jared, I'll, I'll talk to you again. Yeah. All right, man. Peace. Peace. So yeah. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, good yeah. to have him. I'm, I've been smiling the whole time. That was awesome. I've been following <laughs> him for two years, man. Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah, he's definitely knowledgeable. Um, you can you can feel his presence even on the video. Uh, it's not like um, uh, you know he's not bullshitting you. Is no, all no, I'm no. saying. And you know, like I said, I'm an I'm an anti, I'm an anti theist. I'm more than an atheist. I'm like against religion more than just not a part of it. And his spin on all of it is based in voluntary interaction and freedom and love and peace. And I think it's beautiful. He, I think, I, I don't want to, I don't want to try to describe what I think he believes because I don't know that I don't understand religion very much. I sort of get where he's coming from, only from my perspective. Um, I understand what he's coming from, but I'm not going to try to call it anything. Yeah, because I'm going to be wrong. No, I'll I'll describe what I think uh, of myself. I guess um, I consider myself a pantheist in that um, we all are connected. Um, in um, hey, go ahead. Can I, just, can I just plug him one more time before we before we get into it? Okay. Yeah, so that's Derek Bros with uh, the Conscious Resistance Network on, on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere else. They have their own website too. Uh, the Houston Free Thinkers, you have, he's a writer for Ben Swan and the Anti Media. What was the other one he said? Uh, conscious Resistance. Um, well, that's his. That's his, that's yeah. his end, basically. Um, uh, but I'll, I'll definitely uh, be putting up lower thirds and graphics for this. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, all I know is about pantheism in general. It's just, or at least where I'm coming from, we are all connected as, um, you can consider it one spirit or all the spirits are connected. Um, and there is no, per se, as a, you know, entity in and of itself, but um, it's not atheism either. It's uh, it's basically just nature, though the idea of nature being the spirit. That's it. Um, you know, and if that's what he believes, or at least that sounds exactly like what he's describing. And I, as I said, I'm an anti-theist, and I come to at this one with a lot of bias and a lot of probably cognitive dissonance. It's okay. We are all hypocrites. We all are. Whatever. Um, but my, at least I can see a tree. At least I can see the thing that you 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 believe in if you're a naturist or something. Yes. You know, at least you have evidence to back your belief system up, and I can respect that, especially yeah. if the first word that you use to describe it is love. I I just say it's life, but they're the same damn thing to me. Life, love, peace, uh, hope, truth, whatever yeah. you want to call it, it's all the same damn thing to me. You know, you know what I'm saying? If you understand... I mean, tell that to the kid who was just blown up two hours ago in Yemen. Right, but that's probably by the government. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so it's the antithesis of liberty. It's the antithesis of life. It's not nature. It's not natural. It's, it's uh, abhorrent, you know? It's wrong. So no, I I think that uh, you know if we understand nature and um, the spirit and how we are all connected, that's 
basically what I'm saying is every time we hurt someone else, we're hurting ourselves, never mind through reputation, but we are killing our own spirit. That's where I'm coming from. Well, I don't think we understand nature. I think a lot of people think we do. Nature is unstable. Yeah. It, is, it is chaos and beauty. It's chaos and order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's like, free, it's like a free market. It's like it it's is the, voluntary interaction. There is no governing force whatsoever. So right. nature is anarchy. Nature, nature is the the first anarchy that's ever existed. Yes. Yeah. Um, Look, we need to eat some mushrooms or something. <laughs> have a beer. I should get one. <laughs> oh. Why don't you go over the uh, the currencies? Yeah, let's do that right now. So the uh, last time I did this uh, was uh, I took the prices at 8.30 on October 27th. Tonight I took them at 8.05 and tonight being November 3rd. Silver was 17.08. It is 16.14 tonight. So it really dropped. It dropped about a buck and actually it went even into the 15s uh, on Thursday or Friday. Um, so yeah, the net change uh, between 1708 and 1614 is 94 cents. That's a five and a half percent change. Gold went from 1223.06 to 1165.96. That is a $57.10 drop. That's a 4.7 percent change. And Bitcoin actually dropped as well from 350.52 to 323.49. That's a $27.03 change. That's 7.7%. And we know that this is um, due to the dollar gaining strength. And I, um, I think it's about that time that uh, people are pulling out of gold and silver and other commodities as well um, uh, and this is uh, driving up the price of the dollar and this is due to uh, people probably buying for Christmas that's at least my guess um, I think there's a lot of um, you know like uh, volatility due to um, uh, the ramp up of the wars and that kind of thing uh, and a lot of people are uh, you know, like the, they see that uh, uh, that the election cycles are. Go I think there's manipulation with the election cycles a little bit, but not as much as people think. Um, I it in the end, I also believe that um, the dollar is about to burst. Uh, honestly, usually there's a uh, you know a gain in uh, the, the value of the currency and then it just loses itself and this all started actually with the end of QE3 this was last week sometime um, so it seems that that's what's going on uh, and that I yeah I've been forgetting that there's a big deal with um, the uh, you know, the end of the year and people are, uh, you know, about to buy presents for Christmas or the holiday season in general. So that's when the value of the dollar seems to grow a little bit. I would like to talk about uh, ANCAP versus ANCOM. Uh, I've done this before, uh, probably like four times on this show at least. Um, but I, it's been brought to my attention again, and it's kind of bugging me. So um, my thing is um, I'm requesting uh, for Christmas, which might be considered a socialist holiday, um, <laughs> that I get a book from Noam Chomsky. I'm wondering if you've heard of him. Yes, you have. Yeah, I know Noam Chomsky, yep. Yeah, so... Um, I'd like uh, just a book from him, any book, whatever. Uh, I need to understand how he could come to anarcho-syndicalism, which is basically a form of ANCOM, basically. Um, and uh, this guy, I really don't know the word. Yeah, it's 
Suffice it to say, it's a form of anarchism. What this syndicate is, I know what anarcho means, and I just don't see how the things can coincide. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Um, so my thing is, I, uh, I what I'm trying to do with uh, certain debates in statism, um, you know, you'll have the people on the left and the people on the right. People on the left hate corporations. People on the right hate government. If they only <laughs> understood, it's the same freaking thing. Yet yeah, neither of them have a much more simple society. We would have no government. We would have no corporations. Yet neither of the people on the right or the left understand what either of those words mean. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And it's simple, actually. Once you boil it down to the definitions, and once you understand that governments actually create corporations... They're the same, inflation, they're the same thing. Right. It's, yeah, exactly. So um, I, I think that Republicans or conservatives... They understand the market in simple, simple form. You know, simplest. Um, suffice it to say that they understand business, and they just don't understand that corporations get um, uh, less liability, and that is a problem to freedom. That just is a problem to freedom, and they support freedom. So if they put two and two together and just came to four, it, life would make sense, you know? Um, I think the belief that the right support freedom or free markets is a hallucination <laughs> because they're the first ones to call for bans. They're the first ones to call for regulation. Yeah, they are. Um, so that's that. I'm sorry, that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I understand. Yeah, you're right. Um, actually, even more to the point, I had a, a debate about two or three years ago with, uh, well, whatever. Um, I had a debate with a conservative, and he he was saying, um, you know, government should stay out of the market. And I'm like, yes, they should stay out of my property and stop telling me to, you know, build tall buildings or... You can't build to the sidewalk or anything like that. <laughs> and he's like, well, why not? Uh, I don't know. It's my property. I do what I want. If it's a smart idea or a stupid idea, it's my freaking idea. You know, like, leave me alone, right? Um, that's all it is. And, you know, like, well, there are codes for, you know, electricity and all this. And I'm like, uh, yeah, why? You know, the market can supply codes. You know, like, we... You know, as a coder, as a programmer, I know that, you know, we came up with our own programming standards. The government didn't have those. Uh, we just if do it because... If your is coded or regulated, it is not your property. Yeah. And that's where the Republicans lose me, where they try to hallucinate and pretend that they believe in property rights and free markets, because it's either yours or it's not. You can't tell me what to do with my stuff and still call it mine. And that's whether you're talking about your yard or my body or my stuff. It doesn't matter. What trade that I want to want to interact with, if I have cocaine and you have meth and we want to trade, that's voluntary and that's consensual and it is there's clearly a demand on both on both sides. That is a, a legitimate transaction. And anybody who pretends that it's not who hallucinates that it's not, does not believe in free markets. It's either you do or you don't. The second that one law, one ban, one regulation, one prohibition comes into a free market atmosphere, a free market economy, it, that word no longer applies. And that's where a lot of libertarians lose me, though I do consider myself a libertarian. I'm also an anarchist. I'm also an abolitionist. I'm probably a nihilist. There's like 10,000 isms that apply to me, but fundamentally, my, my core value system is based on, on free trade and voluntary interaction. I can operate with who I want, how I want, as long as I'm not forcing anybody into doing anything. Yeah. And you can call me whatever the fuck you want to. Uh, sorry. Whatever you want to, 
yeah. based on that principle. And I don't think that it is a principle. That's just what is for, for me. Um, and the second that, that that is impeded upon, I am no longer operating in a free market in any way, shape, or form. Right. Yeah. Um, at least, I, I guess, when it comes to the other side, uh, when we're talking about, um, you know, conservative or liberal or whatever, when it comes to the liberal side, at least they tell you that they hate the market. They're honest um, about it. Yeah, the funny thing is that a lot of liberals like to shop. Isn't that funny? You know, so, yeah, they like the market. They just What's don't that, like that, to that, see um, that they like the market. That Ancom meme that has, like, all the guys buying the capitalism is evil t-shirt and then, like, the the anarchy ball, black and yellow ball head is there, like, selling them the t-shirts. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, but, yeah, that's that's the thing is um, if if you hate the market, then you're a communist, right? That's... Be clear here. You know, socialism, communism. You're a fascist of some form, whether it's socialism, fascism, constitutionalism, uh, communism, whatever. Right. Even so like, like the people in regulating the market, no matter what term you want to give it. <laughs> yeah. Democ um, democracy and, and constitutional republicanism canism included in that. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. That is, yeah. So, like... When you try to say that you're both uh, a socialist or a communist or a republicist or whatever and an anarchist at the same time, eh, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, yeah. That, that's where I'm at with anarcho-communism. I just don't think the words are – you can't put them together and make sense. You know, how are you going to enforce a recent – Okay, and enforce can't even apply if we're talking about anarcho, right? How right. is the resourced economy going to happen without people being forced into it? Right. It's, it's just not. I, I personally, even if I'm in your geography, immediately I say no to that no matter what, and I will fight you to the death over it. Like, I'm not that good at fighting, but I, I'm an idealist, right? Yeah. So how do you achieve communism without a state? I don't think that's possible. And right. you don't have to call it a state. You can call it a monarchy, a hierarchy, a lampshade. I don't really care. Or a syndicate. <laughs> or a syndicate. And so my <laughs> thing is, like, if, you've, uh, if you have a resource-based economy, and that's exactly what was put across to me today, uh, a resource-based economy, um, how are you supposed to not do this with money? Well, guess what? Gold is a resource. The, I, another big problem I have with ANCOMs is the words that they use don't make sense. Resource-based economy is what every economy is <laughs> always will be. I don't know what the heck that means. That is supposed to mean in their eyes. Um, I know that they think it means like shared resource-based economy or like nobody owns anything or something insane like that. Right. If you don't own anything, I'm coming to your house right now, taking all those cool things on your wall, your wicked fresh t-shirt, it's just mine, and that's fair because oppression, right? Right, right, yeah. Exactly. It doesn't make sense. It's, it's a knee-jerk, it's a knee-jerk reaction, and, and I'm guilty of having a few of those in my time. I kind of came to anarchy initially over getting raided by the cops, and I was like, you know, almost, like I said earlier, I was like on the fork of becoming an ANCOM. And then I just realized that I, I operate in black markets like every single day of my life when I buy my weed and yada, yada, yada. Um, half my bills are under the table and stuff. And I just realized that I am a free market fucking expert, really. Maybe I don't know the, the best economic terminology, but I'm, I'm very experienced in black markets. Right, in a lot but of ways that I'm not going to say and incriminate myself. See, my thing is a black market is just the market and yeah. you know what we have here is the black market because it's taxed you know it's uh that's the initiation of the use of force that's the mob that no, no. um go ahead yeah what you're referring to in my subjective opinion is the state market that's and right the black market is the lack thereof the black market is the only free market that exists 
Okay, it just sounds bad. Is all I'm saying. And I know. I know. You would some lighten people, it up for some. Try to call it like the gray market. Uh, whatever. I it's, man, I could yeah. call it just free market entrepreneurship. It's it's beautiful. It's it is it's the only time you're gonna find the free market in yeah in the the great state of America. <laughs> I, I want to call it the Bitcoin market in a way, sure. or the gold market, sure. or something. Sure. Uh, because it, the black market sounds bad to people. I know that it does. Just like yeah. the word, just like the word anarchist, people are going to instantly hear right. that word and think, ah, fucking Molotov cocktails or something. Right. But yeah, when you um, when you really think about it, every anarchist flag. It doesn't matter if it's black and red, black and gold, black and green. Uh, um, it's black, and that means anarchy, and that is the black market. Uh, at least I'm putting this together because uh, freedom. Well, you know, yeah, mom. because freedom is usually the, the best answer to every question, even if that's all you've got. Some of these pretend ANCAPs who just answer every question with the market is still better than, even if they don't understand, it's still better than pointing guns at you. Yeah. But, but with flags, with black, you know, black is a color, dude. I don't know what you think it represents, and I don't believe in tarot cards or, or whatever, or whatever you're talking about. Black is just the color, and yellow is just the color, and I don't need a specific symbol to represent my life. I used to have a, an American flag on this side and, and combat patches on this side. I don't need, I don't need idols anymore, man. I, I agree with you in that it is an idol, but symbols mean everything. It conveys, it conveys <laughs> definition. Hold on, hold on. Just like words. Words, if you define them, convey meaning. And that is how we understand each other, through symbols. It doesn't matter if it's a hieroglyph. It doesn't matter if it's a flag. I don't like flags just as much as you do, but it does convey a meaning. I mean, I'm telling you, like six feet away from me, there's a don't tread on any, uh, don't tread on, on on me flag. Yep. I haven't hung it up in like, like two years, but it, it's still there, and I, I'm no stranger to the things. I used to wear, I wore one, I wore the, the, the assault flag on my arm for, for quite a long time, and, and I don't know, like even the upside down flag, I'm just at the point where I don't want to collectivize myself, I don't want to categorize myself, you know, especially based on colors and shapes, I think that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. slippery. Uh, I, I get that. I do not subscribe to racism. I don't subscribe to, you know, well, you know what I'm saying. I'm just talking about division, class, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there might be a certain class, actually, when it comes to knowledge, and some people literally hold other people down with knowledge or the lack thereof. But, but um, when it comes to symbols, it just conveys meaning. And um, the, the, the status flags or whatever, all of them, they convey a, a meaning of hate and violence, whereas in anarchism, we're trying not to do that. We're just trying to give a little... Uh, there is... Uh, classification is a good thing when it comes to a scientific point of view. Classification, that's, how, that's knowledge. That is reason. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to classify ourselves to a degree. I agree with principle. But what we're trying to do here is understand that we are all anarchists and we do not under or we don't need violence at all. You know well, what I'm saying? That's all I'm trying to say. I, I, I totally agree with your intentions. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we've had a better argument. You know what I think about intentions. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, intentions. I, I agree with your intentions and and, and you're not wrong. But my problem here, just like I said about slippery slopes, yeah. is that what's to, and like I just said about the libertarian or anarchist who will, who's like the bandwagon guy, who's just going to repeat ideas and answer every problem that you can come up with, with the market will sort it out, where that's not an answer. At this point, that's a straw man. I think. Right, but that's, again, he's classifying himself at a lower level. He's not actually thinking. That's his own problem. You know, like, when we talk about, uh, you know, actual knowledge, actual reason, you know, 
uh, it's okay to use symbols. That's that's what our yeah, language like, is. It's, I lost my train of thought there, and thank you for taking over because I really did. Um, yeah. But like I'm saying about a slippery slope, look at the American flag, look at even the, unfortunately, the Gadsden flag or the Culpeper flag. They're all symbols of very specific forms of anti-freedom where initially they represented freedom and they, over time, become idols. It's a slippery slope. Who's to say your ANCAP flag doesn't become a reason to go bomb other countries? Right, just like the Nazi flag and... Right. You know, that was at one point peaceful. It's that, uh, eventually, even if it starts off as a good thing, eventually flags come to represent violent collectives of people who will hurt other people because they disagree with whatever their flag agrees with. But I agree, man. It, that can, I hope it won't. And if ANCAPs are consistent, it won't turn into that. But. I, will sort of disagree with you as well because when we're talking about meaning and slippery slopes or whatever, patriotism originally meant to defend your countrymen and now it means defend your country or attack for your country at that point. Mm -hmm. At this point. So patriotism, even that word, you know, can get convoluted, you know what I mean? I think patriotism has always been horrible. I think it's a terrible idea. Countrymen is 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 a very weak idea, in my opinion. You I'm shouldn't sure. defend your countrymen. You should you should defend people who are peaceful. Yeah, you're right. You know that's you're where I'm defending your friends. We'll just call them friends. How's that? Sure, that's great. But yeah. if we're talking about a set state ordinance geography, then we're not talking about friends. We're talking about subjugation. Well said. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. This is the We've had the veteran talk. This is like the the biggest idea that's always in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good it's a good thing to talk about. Absolutely. No. Uh, well, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't know. I I think that's probably enough for the show. What do you think, Michael? <laughs> we have Marcel Ed Edward Fontaine next week who runs. Uh, LGBT or LGBT, I don't know, the gay stuff, right? Which is great. Gays are fucking much cooler than status. That's fine. Uh, so, yeah, we have Marcel next week, who's a, who's a gay anarchist gun rights activist. He just spoke at Liberty Fest uh, about two weeks ago with Derek and Adam Kokesh and, and Gary Johnson, so some big-name people. He was on a big stage. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he's going to come on, come on next week, and it should be great. We're going to talk about L homosexuality within the liberty movement, um, you know, how, in my opinion, it, it's just, it doesn't matter to freedom at all. Suck or fuck what you want to. Um, that's where I'm at. So, uh, yeah, I gave, I met Marcel at, at Porkfest, and I gave him a, an illegal snack food, uh, a, a brownie of sorts. <laughs> and he said it was a bit too much for him, so... He's a good kid. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good time, Josh. I hope you go next year, man. That's good. Um, so, yeah, that should be fun. We're going to have Marcel next week. Uh, the following week, we're going to have the Liberty Doll, who's a big gun rights activist out in Boston, anarchist, voluntarist, free market advocate. She's a cool chick. I've met her a few times. Um, She's always posting when she gets a new gun. <laughs> She's also a shrink, so I was thinking we could do like psychological anarchy. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So I guess that's about it, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So next week, uh, or yeah, next week we'll be doing this at nine o'clock uh, Monday, the tenth. Uh, please uh, mark your calendar and uh, remember that, and we'll have Marcel Fontaine on. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Michael, for uh, setting us up with that. That's that's awesome. Yeah, man, so, it's awesome. Marcel's a good kid. He's absolutely. way better than I am. <laughs> All right. Uh, take care, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>